This video covers how it is we can use the marginal abatement cost curve and the analysis we've done in previous videos to understand how landholders make deforestation decisions. So we have the marginal abatement cost curve that you've seen in previous videos. It's downward sloping. On the axis, though, we now have deforestation instead of emissions. What this means is that deforestation increases along the x-axis and that our reduction in deforestation decreases along that axis. And the way that we can think about your marginal abatement cost is that this also represents the marginal cost of reducing deforestation. So instead of abating or cleaning up pollution, we're reducing deforestation. So here, the marginal abatement cost is reflected in the opportunity cost of land. What this means is that a landholder who owns forested property must decide if deforestation is worth it. The marginal abatement cost, or the additional cost for each unit of avoided or reduced deforestation, is reflected by the difference between the value of land that is cleared for agriculture and its value standing as forest, that is the value of forest products, the use of it for ecosystem services, and or its future use in agriculture. So the question that we want to answer is, is it worth it to the landholder to reduce deforestation from something that you see in the graph below is D0 to D1? If not, can we make it worth it to the landholder with a policy instrument? In this analysis, we know that the landholder is thinking about how much income is lost and how much value is gained. So the policy options that we have include decreasing the cost of reducing deforestation, that is shifting the marginal cost curve and making it cheaper to reduce deforestation. This could be accomplished by influencing the opportunity cost of land, that is the value of forested land. We could impose a tax on each unit of deforestation. As you've seen in previous video, this creates the incentive to reduce deforestation until the marginal cost of reducing deforestation would be equal to that tax. Another policy option is that we could limit deforestation to a specified amount. Here, we could limit it to D2. In this case, we're not concerned with the costs to the individual landholder. We just tell them that they have to reduce deforestation to D2. If not, they have to pay a fine. And finally, we could use a subsidy, such as payments for ecosystem services. What subsidies do would create payments to landholders for each unit of deforestation that's reduced. So instead of paying a tax, they would be receiving a subsidy for each unit reduced. In this case, the landowner would reduce deforestation as long as the subsidy payment was greater than the cost of reducing deforestation. So the analysis would end up with a result that was identical to a tax. The only difference here, though, is that the government, instead of receiving a tax revenue, would have to pay farmers for this policy. So I have two main takeaways for you. First, Economists think about influencing deforestation decisions within this marginal decision framework. And second, the opportunity cost of land is a key determinant of how much a landowner will deforest and how much they will respond to different policy instruments.